prove that the limit of a sequence is unique. Before we do the proof, let's quickly recall what it means for a sequence to have a limit. So a sequence a sub n has a limit, say l, if a sub n converges to l. So what does this mean? Well, this means that for all epsilon greater than zero, we can find a positive integer, let's call it capital N, such that for all little n bigger than capital N, the distance between a sub n and its limit can be made arbitrarily small, so it's smaller than epsilon. So that's what it means for a sequence to converge to L, and in this case here, L is called the limit of the sequence. So in this problem, we have to prove that the limit of a sequence is actually unique. So to do that, we'll start by supposing that we have a sequence a sub n that converges to, say, little a, and that it also converges to, say, little b, with a not equal to b. So now in order to use the definition of a limit, we need to come up with, with an epsilon. So the one we're going to use in this problem is the following. So put epsilon equal to the absolute value of a minus b. Since a is not equal to b, a minus b is either positive or negative, but when we take the absolute value, we're guaranteeing that it's positive. So this is a positive number. And now we're going to use our first condition. So since a sub n converges to a, we can find some positive integer, I'll call it n sub 1, such that for all little n bigger than capital N1, the difference between a sub n and a is smaller than epsilon over 2. Now we're going to do the same thing with this condition here. Since a sub n converges to little b, there exists another positive integer, which we can call n2, such that for all little n bigger than capital N2, we can look at the difference between a sub n and b, take the absolute value, and that should be less than epsilon over 2. And so we want both conditions to be true in order to try to reach a contradiction. So what we'll do is we'll take the maximum of n1 and n2. So set capital M to be the maximum of N1 and N2. And so then, what we'll do is we'll look at A minus B. So we know that A minus B, this is equal to, now we want to somehow involve these other two inequalities. We want to involve this one and we want to involve this one. So then I probably should have said for all n bigger than capital M. So to involve these guys what we'll do is use the triangle inequality. So we're going to add and subtract a sub n. So then a minus a sub n plus a sub n minus b. So all we did here was basically just add zero. And so now we're going to use the triangle inequality. So we're going to think of this as the first term and this as the second term. So this is less than or equal to the absolute value of the first term plus the absolute value of the second term. And now because little n is bigger than capital M and m is the maximum of n1 and n2, we know that this first term here is less than epsilon over 2. Likewise, because little n is bigger than capital M and it's the maximum, we know that this second condition is also true, so this is less than epsilon over 2. So epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2 is epsilon, and we know something about epsilon, it's equal to this. So if we carefully look at what we have, let's look at it carefully, we have the absolute value of a minus b, 
and we're saying that's less than the absolute value of a minus b. So that's impossible. So a contradiction. And that's it. I hope that made sense.